Hey, what's up, viewer? Welcome back to the series. This is going to be my first build through video for finishing Nebulous. And as I stated in the intro, my goal is to run this for about an hour. Do this in about hour segments to help with uploading. And to give myself a little break here and there. And I'm not going to focus on explanations in this series so much. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the YouTube comments. And I can get back to you on those. I'm going to focus on actually completing stuff for the game. So without further ado, I am just going to get started. So, something that I noticed when I entered play mode and I go through the process of changing tiers. So for instance, if I'm in the star system and I zoom out, select the star system from the outside and zoom in, and then zoom back out, it's stuck at yellow. It shouldn't do that. It should actually clear itself when it leaves. So for instance, if I have this selected and go in here, select the planet, zoom out, and zoom back into the system. Oh, I actually cleared it in this instance. And the reason it cleared it here was because I selected a new instance here. So I guess it's not a huge deal, but it wouldn't hurt to clear the active selection. So to clear the active selection, essentially every time I change which tier I'm on, I have to remember to clear the active selection and clear its renderer. So to do that, I need to take a look at my player events and I have to, I'm trying to think here if I should actually do that or not. If I'm using the player click select button, it will do a lot of that already. So I might need to use a specific component. So in this instance, if I'm I guess specifically what I'm going to call this is it has to do with the player's active selection, so I can stick it in here. I'm trying to remember how I should do this. Essentially the it actually happens when the event is triggered. So I'm trying to remember, I think that happens on the system. Okay. So if I'm exiting the star system. I need to remember to, if it's going to climb out of it, it needs to, oh, in this instance it actually did that. So maybe what I did was I forgot to set it up on the star cluster. So if I'm exiting the star cluster to the nebula, I have it set up here, so it looks like all I'm really actually doing is forgetting to change the renderer. So let me take a look at that. I have the current active selection exposed, so if I enter play mode, let's see if it properly is changing the active selection. It might already be doing that. So if I select the planet and I zoom out, it actually does clear it. Okay, good. So if I select the star system and zoom in, it also clears it. And if I zoom back out, so it's just the renderer that's messed up. So if I zoom out and zoom back in. By selecting this one, it there isn't a selection, but it still has the render messed up. Okay, so to fix that, we have to go into our each of our tiers. So, for instance, we already did it in this one. We have the active star cluster. Or excuse me, not the active star cluster. We have the. So let's just start from this one. Interselected star system from star cluster view to enter. That means that we have a player data selected, which means that we're guaranteed to have a current active selection. So before we null this current active selection, we have to actually grab its mesh render, and we have to grab its material, and we have to set the float value to actually change the material. We have to use the proper name for it, so we're going to say is active selection. For the property and then to set it to false we use 0f. It doesn't actually, I haven't actually been able to use a boolean so I'm just using set 0f. 
So since we're entering a selected system, we can't actually enter the system without having an active selection. So that'll actually work. For exiting the star cluster, we have to more or less do the same exact thing here. So I'm just going to copy this whole line and drop it in here. And that will turn off the renderer. However, we don't want it to run that because it will complain in the event that the current active selection is null. So if, as long as the current active selection is not equal to null, then we'll have it bother to do this. Otherwise, it'll throw an inconsequential error basically into the system. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And we just simply need to wash, rinse, and repeat for the active nebula. So if we're entering from the top, it's basically the same thing. We're just setting the active, we're changing the active render. And once again, since there has to be an active selection, I'm not going to bother with the null code. But for the exit code, we're going to have to do the null thing. So we'll toss this in here and we'll do the same thing. We'll say player data. Oops. It's auto completing a little weird. Connect selection. So as long as it's not equal to null, do this. Is pretty straightforward for how that's going to work. Oops, and I forgot to. Forgot to tab it over. All right, so this time I'm just going to copy paste this because I actually think it could work pretty good. Close the tabs. Double check we fixed exiting exiting the nebula. So we just or excuse me, exiting the nebula, entering the nebula. Okay, that one's fixed. So now it's just entering the nebula from the galaxy. So we will just go like this, and as long as it's not null, it'll just turn off the material properly and it'll change the current active selection to null, which is what we want. So if I deselect this, or if I go back a step, let me just double check, so it's basically the same thing. Okay. And this formatting is a little weird. Must be, I think it's just because if I copy pasted it. Okay, so now we have this set up and we can do a quick test. We should, in fact, have that odd selection artifact removed. So if I select the sun to zoom out, I have to select this to zoom back in. The sun's not selected. If I zoom out, it's properly not selected. So if I select it and I zoom out, this isn't selected, but if I select it to go in, once again it's not zoomed out, or it's not selected, and if I zoom out, okay. So same thing. Okay, so that is all working as intended then. Very good. So that was just something really quick I needed to sort out. Okay. I need to, now that I have the active selection working properly, I've got to set it up to where whenever I select in something that is scan capable, I need to activate the scanning UI capacity. So if I enter play mode, And I select the planet, the starting planet by default. What should happen here is I need to have the option to start designating a scanning radius, a scanning arc, and a scanning frequency. So I am considering, I guess what I'm considering is there needs to be, I already have the, I actually already have the object. There's a scanning radius prefab that I've created, and I can use that to function as a scan as a scan circle. However, I've got to make sure that whatever is selected has scanning capacity. 
So to do that, I suppose the easy thing would be if I have a planet that can scan, the prefab needs to have some sort of I guess the easiest thing to do would be to just use a tag component. So you just make a component that says I have scanning capacity and whenever you select it, if it has that scanning capacity, it has to tweak the UI. So that is probably how I'm just going to do this for now. Let me make sure I didn't already do that somewhere here. The other thing I can do is use this, I could just use this scanning capacity component and it doesn't have to be a tag. So I actually think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so to make this work, I do not want to add it to the planet prefab because then the planet, any planets that can't scan will have scanning capacity from the get-go. So instead we are just going to go into the star system generation spawn celestial bodies code and we have to... Oh, and it looks like I did add a scanning capacity component already. Okay, so let me jump back over here. So if I enter play mode, my capital planet, because I kind of have it hard-coded here, which is a little janky, but that's what I've got for now. And I have the actual values exposed through the components, so I can jump onto the main planet here, and I actually already have the... Oh, I actually didn't add the component. So that's a little bizarre. The, let's see here, active star system, spawn celestials, Actually, okay, so let me see here. I might have just messed up my number by, by one. So if I click on this one, does this have it? Okay, so I messed up this. This just needs to be zero because it's just checking if... Oh, but it's not going to work like that, is it? I guess this isn't necessary, but I'm just going to move this up. For some reason, I was thinking the sun prefab was in the list of celestials, and it isn't. So instead, what I can do is say, if it's the, basically if it's the first celestial, we need to add the scanning capacity for the base planet. If it is not, then what we can do is set all of the other ones to not active so they don't render. So now, if I come back over here. And I enter the game, enter play mode. It should now have the capital planet set up with the scanning capacity component. Okay, good. And it's also the zero because I haven't set a cap on these yet. So we'll just come in here and this is the scanning arc. That makes sense to just be 360. The max scanning frequency, though, I don't know how fine-tuned this is going to get, so I just will start with 100. And then for the max scanning radius, let's just start with 10. See how that works. And this allows me to tweak the values from the editor. I don't have to go into the script and change them from there. All right. So I don't know if I want the UI to be gone or just grayed out if there isn't scanning capacity. So I suppose for simplicity, if I jump into, let me see where my UI is at here. If I jump into the game UI, and I guess I should move it over so it can be seen here. Let me find it real quick because it was buried under some menus. Okay. So here's this. Here's the basic UI. I can just fill it up, I suppose. Even get some. Am I in play mode or something? 
not in play mode, but it looks like it's going a little slow here. It's kind of weird. I'm not sure why that's hassling me. Okay. So essentially what we want to do, and this is something that's unfortunate about this UI builder. It looks like this in the builder, but then if you go out here, it's like, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> so like, it's not a perfect system by any, by any means. It's jinky. It's a little jinky. I'm still on the fence if I want to use it or not. It has some cool features, but it's also a little janky. For now though, I'm just going to tough it out. So if I go in here and I open up my base visual element and I open up my main UI element, we have the economy tally, but then we also have the these separate we have these separate sliders that are actually for controlling the active scanner. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a visual element to the main UI that I can use to nest all of these components under. And I'm just going to call this like active scanning sliders. And let's see here. I don't want them to, let's see if I change the value to 10 or something. If I go over the value, does it expand or if I change the high value, does it, does that help? Okay. So we're just gonna set this to zero. We're gonna set this to 10. And then we're going to, let's see here. I think if we go to the active scanning slider Oh, this has the full element. So I guess what we have to do is click on each slider and we have to go to their, go to its flex row property and set it to one. And did that work? No, it did not work. And I think it's not going to work because I set the position manually here. Or I set the size, to the width to this. So let me switch this to auto. Did I just switch it to auto? Okay, good. So I fixed it. So now we're going to come here, we're going to switch it to auto again. And then come here and switch it to auto again. And we didn't even have to do the flex grow, did we? They already were at one, okay. So the reason I did that is now I can just come to the active scanning sliders and whenever I want to, I can tweak the, like the visibility. Or I can basically just turn it off or turn it on which it's acting weird. So let's see if I leave it as visible. Okay, so I can do this. I can, so I can like turn down the opacity to like 50% or something. And then I can just like turn off its ability to be focused, essentially. What that'll do is I guess it just adds extra complexity though. Okay, now the flex isn't working. If it just switches back to one, is this going to fix it? Not quite. It's not correct either. It's both set to auto size here. Okay, so maybe what I need to do is I need to set this size manually. So what I had over here is that it's set to percentage and 10. Okay, so that's pretty good. So. I can tweak the opacity to communicate to the player that it's inactive without reconfiguring the entire UI. Whereas if I display it or turn off the display, it's going to reshape everything. And then this just isn't working properly. So the only thing I'm not sure of is how to make sure these sliders don't actually do anything. I guess the other thing I could do is just add like a scan button, which I actually have to do anyway, so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to drag a button element into this, and I'm going to change this to active, or I guess it should be what, like launch, launch active scanning parameters or something. Then we can change the text to say scan. 
and we have to fiddle fart with the UI. So I'm gonna come down to the text. I'm going to make sure oh, it is all centered. A little janky. Oh, it's because I pushed enter here. So if I clear that out, now it's fixed. Okay. Okay, so now I have this button. And it's the same thing. We could technically make its opacity go down to symbolize that it's not, not on. I think, though, if we turn off this focusable option, the button can't be clicked. So let's just see if that works or not. So I'm going to control S to save it. I'm going to close the UI builder and then going to jump into play mode. And we're going to see if the button is clickable. And then I guess we need to fix the font as well. Okay, so you can. Okay, so I can click this button and I can grab these sliders and stuff. But we don't want it trying to. We don't want it trying to manipulate a scanning ring if the selection doesn't have the capacity to do that. So we've got to set it up to where it will not do anything with these inputs whenever a selection is not a scanning, doesn't have any scanning capacity. So let me pull the window back up here and I'm going to tweak this a little bit. I'm going to jump, jump up to like 18 font and bolt it up. And I think I'm just going to make the color black also, which I think if I do this, it breaks things. If you, I think if I change the default settings, it like screws up the, um, responsiveness. So let me just double check. Okay, good. It's still responding. Okay, so now that we've done that, let me see if turning off focusable and it actually doesn't look like it even put that put those colors in there. Man. I am considering at a later date. Like, it's so cool. This UI Builder has so much stuff, but it, it's just, it's janky. Whatever. I will make, I'll just, I'm just gonna use it for now. Okay, so let's click on the button and turn off focusable. And we want to see if turning this off will actually re remove the responsiveness of the button. And nope. Okay, so the button's still basically like this. So I'm not actually sure then what focusable does. If the button remains focusable here. Okay, so I, honestly I'm not sure how I want to accomplish this functionality. If the functionality... It would be nice to just disable the element. Like, It'd be cool if I could just come up here and disable it, but okay. So it's, I'm just going to have to do it at the event level. So let's say I've got this UI going on. I've got to, I've got to set it up to where it will change. I have to basically conditionalize the events of the UI system. And that has to do with events I've already got. So we go into the player events. I already have player chooses new active selection and player chooses no active selection. If there's no active selection, they can't do a scan. So the UI needs to get, the control UI needs to get disconnected. If they choose a new active selection, then the action needs to check if the new selection has the proper component, which I'm actually not sure if I am still using this method here. So I'm going to take a look here. Center players active selection.
Okay, so this is the raycast for when the anytime the player clicks the left mouse, it throws a raycast into the screen and returns if there is a hit on an object. So what we're going to do here is we have to check. Essentially, what we have to do is say if grab the player data in the current active selection. We have to say get component. We have to check if there is a scanning capacity on the object. And if there is, what we have to do is we basically have to grab the UI element and we have to disconnect it essentially. Which means that actually at this instance if it has the scanning capacity component we actually want to enable the ability for it to work. Which means that it would need to be disabled by default. Which means real quick I need to google something. Oops this is still a here. I've got a Google if. Okay, I'm just going to Google like Unity Editor, Unity 3D, UI Toolkit, Focusable. Because so I was under the impression that that would turn off the ability for the element to even be focused. So. Oh, okay. So this refers to being able to like tab through it. Okay, so that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So it's like, I need to be able to more or less de disconnect to the, hold on, let me, let me catch the play here. Hey, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Come on, go, 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 go. Feed you in a half hour, okay? All right, so this was the whole reason I added the global element because I was hoping to just disable everything inside of the element. So let me just see if I can just, let me try this again. So Unity 3D UI Toolkit, disable visual element. Okay, so there is a, there's a set enabled. Disables its children. Okay. Which is what we want. However, I don't know if that changes the... Alright, so let's do it like this. I'm going to open up the UI again. I'm going to set the, de the default opacity to like 65. Looks pretty good. And with the 65 default opacity, the idea is that and let me just double check there isn't a, hold on, is this? That might not be the same thing, okay. So we save this. And I can't actually, I guess I'm just gonna have to try to, let me just tab this in here. It's not quite the same fit, but it's a little easier. Okay, so the opacity will be like that by default. And essentially in the code, if player data has a scanning capacity, we, first thing we should do is set the capacity back to 100%. So to do that, we're going to add a, another public reference to our, I'm trying to remember how to do this, I think it was UI document, using UI elements, UI document, and we're going to Let's see here. I guess I can do it all in line. I might not want to though. So let's see. UI document. So this is what we have to do. I have to say visual element, call it root, equals the UI document, and we have to say root visual element. And then from the root, 
we say query. But we want to use Q because it shorthands the return. And what we're returning is we're just returning a visual element. And in here we have to name the visual element. And what do we call like active scanning sliders or something? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually rename this real quick to just active scanning elements now that we added a button. So active scanning elements. Save it. This allows us to actually access the component or the actual visual element. And now that we have the visual element, oh, we have to store it in here too. It's a visual element. I guess we just call it active scanning element equals root. And then come down here as a ASE active scanning element. And we have to gather its opacity value. So let me see if I can just type. It's not showing anything for opacity. Set opacity. I can set enabled, which is what we were trying to do, but the visual element does have an opacity. Maybe style. That opacity? Okay, it's not worse. So equals 100. If that's a floating point. That's just something called a style float. Okay. Let's just see if that works. So if this works correct, whenever I select the capital planet, the UI element should its opacity should return to 100. So let's see if this works or not. So the sun doesn't do it, but... Okay, so that didn't work. But we did get some kind of error, so let's see what happened here. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to link the UI document. Okay, so player input has player click select selection button. And we just have to drag our UI document object in there and it'll actually grab the proper component. So now it should work. It's one of the weaknesses of not using just-in-time compilation because you Sometimes forget that, but now that we're in here. Okay, so this works. We should be able to get the opacity up, and it does. Sweet. So now if we click off of it, it should, of course, revert the opacity back to its original. Which we had it at 65. I guess I could make a, I could make a UI. I could add a UI value in here, but I don't want to. Instead I am having a new idea. I'm going to actually just make an empty object for player, or I'll just call it UI data. Drag this up here under UI document and generate a new component. So I'll come down here to UI. I'm going to go over to my custom editor flow window, click scripts, click mono behavior. And I'm going to type in, I'm just going to make it easy to say UI data. Hold control, push enter. It will generate the script and it'll open the script up. So now I go in here and I'm just going to make an easy float called public float. We'll just call it like, we don't even have to call it scanning opacity, we can call it we'll call it inactive element opacity. Then we will come back over here Give it a second to compile since it added a new script. And we're just going to drop this new UI data component onto here. And the opacity we wanted to start with was 65. That makes a lot of sense. It looked decent enough. 
And this will also even out any other elements that get deactivated, but I'm not sure of any off the top of my head that will. So now we have a UI data object, and we can... Now we can use this inactive element opacity to normalize the different values, or the different UI values. To do that, we're going to have to jump into the player click selection button, and we're just going to have to dump the data in there. So I'm going to come up here, and we're going to say public UI data, UI data. And we're going to have to jump down here and Okay, so it's 65 by default. There's nowhere where it's initializing though. So instead we are just going to revert the opacity on a deselection. There's actually a couple of ways that this could work because if the selection does not have the component, then the scanning element still needs to revert its opacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'd have to say else active scanning element. Oh, and actually, see, that's. Okay, so basically we're just going to copy paste this here. And then in here we will say UI data dot inactive element opacity. And then we have to do the same thing down here. Where if no selection is chosen, we have to do the same thing create the element and simply deactivate the opacity value. All right, so that's one step in the right direction for getting the responsiveness of the UI setup. So when it started, it'll say stay at 65. If I select the starting planet, it should go to 100. And then if I select the sun, it should revert which it did not. Oh, and same thing, I forgot to, I just forgot to link the UI data in here. Okay, so let's give that another shot. Okay, so now if I select it, it comes up. If I select the sun, it should deactivate, and it doesn't. Or if I deactivate it, okay, so this is not actually working correctly. So let me see here. So if the selection has a scanning capacity, it should set the opacity to 100. If it does not, it should set it, it should just set it to 65. And if Okay, so if, the, if I cast the raycast, and there's already another selection, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going to just let it. Okay, so it's setting current active selection to a new object. And if that new object has scanning capacity, Then set it to 100, which worked. If I hit another target, but it does not have connective selection scanning capacity, it should just be setting it to like 65 here. So I'm just going to hard code this and see if that fixes it for some reason. Maybe it's not referencing properly. Same thing down here. So I'm going to jump back over here.
And this all this isn't very prototypical, of course. It's not. It would be a lot easier to just ignore the responsiveness and just leave it up there. But for some reason, I've got it in my head to fiddle fart with this responsiveness, which does decrease how quickly I can actually spit out some real mechanics. Okay, so if it goes to back at 100. If I click something else, it is just straight up not working properly. Okay, so the next step is to use the debugger. Use the debugger because I'm not sure why it's not working. So it should go to right here. It should check for the component, which is working. Oops. Give it a second to think. Okay, so if I click this, it should bring me into the debugger. And it's so player data exists, current active selection exists, and the current active selection has a component called scanning capacity. So that means it's gonna enter this block. So if I step into the block, this is all gonna work. Okay, so that's all working properly. So I'm gonna reset this. And I'm going to instead click on the sun now. And it fired at the debugger again. So player data, current active selection, it's the star. And if I check the star's components, it does not have a scanning capacity, which is correct. So therefore, if I step over this, it should take me to the else block, and it should execute the else block. Okay, so root. That's correct. If I query for active scanning elements, it returns an element. And then if I open up the style of this element, Just looking for the opacity. So here's the opacity. It's at 100. Okay, so if I take one more step here, is it set to 65 properly? Okay, so it says it's correct in the debugger. So the code is correct, but for some reason the element is not act is not actually updating itself. The element is sticking at its opacity. So that's weird. Chucks. Sometimes you just don't know what the hell's going on. So I'm assuming it has something to do with the UI builder being janky. So if I open the builder, click display, the opacity is set to 65. So it's okay, so it's set to 65 there, and if I select this, it's still set to 65. So it doesn't actually matter if it's, that's not, that is not indicating whether or not it's setting properly. Okay, so I really don't know what's going on here. The, it should be diminishing its opacity, but it isn't. I'm not sure what's up with that, to be honest with you. I'm going to take a look here. So let's see. So Unity 3D UI Toolkit. And we're going to say capacity not matching the value. Hmm. 
Hmm. So this is saying that the opacity is between zero and one. So if I'm setting it to six from one hundred to sixty-five, those are both counting as over one. So if it's that, if it's like that, then essentially what we have to do is here it's just one to be maxed, and then here it's just 0.65. And if this works, we can change the data value to match it. So let's see if that's how that works. All right. I'm not sure if it's actually using an iResolve style, but that might just be how it is. Usually opacity is done with the percentage anyway. So if I select this, it's fine. If I select this, okay, good. It's working properly. So that was the issue. It, okay. And you can feel real dumb sometimes when that happens to you because you wrote the code correctly as far as you knew based off of the display being based from 0 to 100. You check the debugger and it's setting properly but it's still not working. And it winds up being just something funky like that. So now that we've sorted out that particular issue, if we jump back into our code here, we can in fact go back to this idea where we were going to say this is UI data dot inactive what was it in a oh crap, I can't remember. UI data dot inactive element opacity. However, we have to go into UI data and we have to guard it using a range. So we use a range attribute and we're just going to say that the 0f to 1f. So now our UI data value up here will give us the ability to set a value that will guaranteed be inside the correct range. Which in this instance we just want it to be 0.65 that works. So we'll double check that it's still working. And, okay, so scannable, we select it, it sets up. If we deselect it, it deactivates. If we act select the scannable, it activates. If we select a different celestial that is not scannable, it deactivates properly. Okay, good. So it's checking the component as well. However, even though we change the opacity, I can still come down here and fiddle far with these, which is not what we want. We don't, we don't want the sun doing a scan. All right, and we don't want nothing doing a scan, so it's like... We have to, even though the, even though visually it's, the responsiveness is broken, it is not actually broken, or it's not deactivated all the way. So we have to, basically we just have to guard the event calls, or we have to, I mean, that's the, that's the, the way I'm imagining it, is we have to guard the event calls. So. I'm trying to think of a way to do it using an event or something. Instead of checking every time, I think it'll work anyway. So, okay. So we have to do a few things. Okay, so player input. I was assuming player input would be mouse clicks, keyboards. Therefore, if we are assuming it's a UI input... Okay, yeah, I was, I was doing those off of the... actual UI document. So for instance, for the scanning radius adjustment, I'm not sure what this was doing. It, doesn't, it looks like it wasn't doing anything, so I'm going to take it out of there. And it was, I was using an event callback here, wasn't I? might redo this because there's a weakness using events like this. Oh, but the reason I was doing it was f because of the UI system. 
Okay, this is cool too. I can just grab it from the object it's on. So essentially I'm doing this. Okay, so, it, so I can actually, I could effectively deactivate them by clearing their events. It's way easier to just guard it, to use a guard on it. So let me think here. If I'm going to... I guess the first thing we need then is the... Okay, so here's what we want to do. We have player just scanning radius, but I don't know what I think about this at the moment. So I'm going to deactivate this component and I'm going to have to generate a new component. So for player scanning, we are going to open up the editor flow window and we're going to make a new mono behavior and we are just going to call it active scanning elements. And inside of this, we need to do a few things. So on start, we have to subscribe some events to essentially all four, all four of the elements in this object, or in this UI element. So we've got to grab the three sliders and the button. And to do that, we're going to have to Oh, we don't have to actually do this. We can just say, since, okay, so we're saying get component UI document, and it has to use Unity Engine Unity Elements. And from here, we have to actually grab a visual element root, which is, we do that by just grabbing the root visual element off of our UI document component. And we can, the get component right here is grabbing the component off of whatever this component's object is. So since active scanning elements is sharing the, it's sharing the object with the UI document, we don't have to gather the object first, it just knows, it knows that it's referring to its own object. So as long as, as long as these components share the same object, you can not have to reference the object itself. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is say root, and we want to query it again, so, We'll say visual element, active scanning elements equals root dot q and visual element, and we're gonna name it. What we named it was active scanning elements, and we're probably gonna have to end up grabbing the sliders and the buttons. So I'll do a slider. And what was this like? Scanning range. I guess we might as well query for it. And equals root.query for a slider. I have to name it. And I can't remember what I named it. So let me double check in the UI builder. And we named it active scanning radius angle and frequency. Okay. So active scanning radius and these are practically the same thing so we're coming down here this thing changes to radius changes to angle same thing over here angle and then it'll change this one to frequency oops don't want to delete everything okay so now we've got those selected we also need the buttons so we'll see button Launch scan equals root, and we'll query for button. And I don't remember what I called this exactly either. I think I called it like something huge actually. So I might rename it real quick. Let's call this launch scan. Okay, so now that we have all four of these elements queried, 
you can actually gather their events for whenever they're activated. And that was what was happening over here with this event callback change event thing. We have to might we have to essentially register the reaction for whenever the user actually changes something. So the easy one to do will be the button. And let me see here, is it registered in it is, okay. So let's say launch scan register callback. I don't think we need to register a value change callback because all this does is click. So it has to be any event it also has to have an event type. Um, I'm actually not sure about this one. A T event type. I'm not sure about this, so let me see. C sharp T event type. Not sure here, let's see. So we've got, oops, weird. I'm not sure what to register as callback here. Can I just do event type like this? Just on mouse down. Okay, let's just try that. Fin type mouse down. Oh. No, that's not gonna go in there. That's kinda weird. So I'm not actually sure here what to do. Let's see. Register callback T event type. Can I do it without? Doesn't look like it. Even then, it wants me to go like this. I guess, okay, so mouse down is the only one I can imagine. Except for it's getting a little annoyed at me trying to do that. And it's simply not a mouse down event either, it's like a... It's just the button being pushed. But, let's see if I can make it work or not. Let's see. And it, I guess I want to claw back here. Okay. So now what we have to do is write a callback. And I'm just gonna write a really quick, a really quick one. Just to see if it's actually working. Right? However, that is actually a one whole hour. So in one whole hour, all I managed to do was fix a bug that kept kept highlights on certain objects when I switched tiers and I managed to like change the opacity on an ob on the UI element and I was trying to f set this up to where I could actually get events calling through here but I have to s I still have to figure out how to register callbacks correctly on these elements I haven't figured out for the sliders because they're values but the button I have to do a little bit of work to figure that out exactly so for now though, I'm going to actually call this particular series since this was a whole hour and it actually blew by pretty quickly, so if you manage to stick stick through this so far, I really appreciate it. The support really helps me out. Go check out my Patreon if you're willing to do that. And I'm going to end this for now and upload it, and I will start on the next one.